All righty. What's going on, everybody? Uh, we're coming at you here a week before uh, the start of the master course. I believe we start on Monday, correct, Charlie? Starting on Monday, guys. Starting on Monday. Starting on Monday. Starting on Monday. So we're going to wrap it up here with this last webinar. Uh, we decided to give you guys a little taste, uh, a small taste here of what you're going to get. Uh, you know, when you uh, when you guys are actually in the course, and again, most of the course is predominantly based on tape, uh, you know, bid and ask, supply and demand, how it moves the markets, um, and how you can make better decisions in your trading uh, when it comes to uh, execution. Uh, and part of that execution also means figuring out how you're going to pick the right strike price. Now, before we actually go into some of this stuff, though, you keep in mind, though. When you have a solid understanding of tape, bid and ask, supply and demand, it's actually easier to pick uh, the right strike price, uh, expiration, how much time you want to give these things. Uh, it's much easier to make those decisions when you have a background uh, in tape. So today uh, we're going to just discuss a couple examples here on how, uh, depending on what your strategy is, what, where you should be looking to, uh, you know, select your strike price uh, as well as your expiration. So before we kick that off here, uh, I think Charlie's going to give you guys a little shout out and a background here on uh, the master course. Yeah. So guys, and Lucian, I don't know if you want to pull up the, the sure. course page on there. Um, today is really about giving you kind of a sneak peek into a lot of what the master course is about. So Lucci's going to be going through his method, like his approach, some of his thought process for how he chooses to strike, um, which of course we will touch on tape reading a little bit because tape reading, I don't, Luch, I don't know if you're gonna get into flow too, but those two are sort of inextricably linked to how he approaches options. Um, and that's a lot of what the master course is about. So the next course, the live course starts on Monday, uh, that's March 25th. We announced that we have 10 spots open at a discounted rate, so 750 bucks off for uh, the next 10 people, we did that on Monday, and those are there are three of those left. So if you guys are interested, uh, definitely hit me up after the webinar, charlie at sanglucci.com, or you can just go straight to um, www.sanglucci.com forward slash MC750. I'll drop that link in the chat too. Um, you guys can check it out. So you get to basically learn everything that Lucci does, um, how he trades equities and options, flow, tape reading, um, and, and most importantly, trading psychology. We've touched on trading psychology a lot over the last two weeks with the webinars we've had from guys in the steam room and one-on-one and -on -one with Lucci. Um, if you guys wanna watch any of those, they're on our YouTube channel, definitely check them out. Uh, we, I think we hit the, the importance of trading psychology pretty, pretty deeply there. Um, you learn Lucci's options writing strategy, it's not just about teaching you exactly what he does, although you do learn that. It's about him teaching you the skill sets of tape reading and options, um, how the markets work, the psychology of other market participants, market makers, larger institutional traders, even algorithms, um, understanding why they're doing what they're doing so that you can then take all that information, adapt it, customize it to your own strategy, your own account size, your own risk temperament, and uh, and do it on your own. That's, that's, the, whole, that's the whole goal of it. So, um, we'll talk more about it later. If you guys have questions, put it in the chat, but, um, check it out. Sanglucci.com, Porsche slash MC750. We got three spots left at that discounted rate. So get after it. Right. And, uh, we're already getting a lot of questions here coming in guys. Try to keep your questions here for later on. And again, we'll, we'll try to go through them and try to get as many as we can. A lot of you guys are asking about recordings. We keep every single recording up on our YouTube channel. So just go to youtube.com uh, forward slash saying Lucci. Um, okay. And yes, absolutely. There will be copies of the recording. Um, so let me just throw out just a cup. Let me just throw out this one trade that. Me myself, like I've been lamenting that I, I missed and I, I, I just kind of tossed it around because again, like a lot of what you learn, uh, you know, based on bid and ask, supply and demand or whatever, like you can have your strategy, but as far as execution goes, you know, there's a psychological component to it. And sometimes you're going to be there. Sometimes you're not. This one in particular, I missed. This was uh, about last week. This was uh, last week here. Somebody came in and bought some Amazon calls and they bought actually like basically like in the money uh, options more or less. Right. So the stock was trading like seventeen hundred bucks. And somebody bought a crap ton of these, right? So picture a thousand of these, let's just call them a thousand. And they bought this week's, okay? So they bought a week out. They bought this week's options 
And, you know, let's just ballpark him uh, at 1,000 here, okay? And let's just do some quick math here. And, again, I mean, this is just one uh, 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 quick and dirty example. Uh, so if you have 1,000 uh, options of these, uh, what do you got, right? So let's ballpark them. Let's just say you got them at around 20 bucks. Uh, it's a $2 million bet, you know what I mean? It's a $2 million bet here on Amazon, right? Now, what else is going on on Amazon and what else is going on in the world of these tech names, right? Microsoft had already kind of went to all-time highs. Uh, you know, the last sort of pack uh, to move were some of these high beta names that they kind of held down. The, uh, the Googles of the world, uh, Amazons of the world, the NVIDIAs, uh, the Apples. Obviously, you guys have been uh, uh, looking at these pretty aggressively. How many of you guys have traded these things aggressively uh, either today or within the last week? I mean, this is where most of the juice has been uh, for the last week and change. Anyways, so if we take a look at that Amazon option now and try not to have a fucking heart attack because this is uh, basically where I've been for the last couple of days. Uh, you can see all the volume right here. This is where that buyer started to come in and purchase those contracts at around $19 to $20. And now you can take a look at what they're priced at right now. Okay. Now, obviously here we're talking about a considerable, a considerable amount of money, right? So now we're talking about the connection too of how some of the smarter money does it. I don't know about you guys, but if you're one of the 105 people in this webinar, Chances are you don't have an, a, an account size of $20 million or $50 million or maybe $100 million to throw $2 million on a fucking – on an Amazon call, let alone a weekly call, which has an expiration of, let's say, well, I don't know, seven days. Uh, quick question to you guys. How many of you guys trade weeklies versus – uh, monthlies. How many of you guys aggressively trade trade weeklies in here? Just go ahead and shout out real quick. Um, I mean, I mean, most likely what I'm going to do is just smack the shit out of all of you because chances are the, the the most of you guys who are aggressively trading weeklies, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. OK, but let's keep going here. All right. So this particular option on Amazon, there's a lot of different ways, of course, you could play this. Right. I mean, you could short puts. Right. You could buy some more expiration. Right. Now, the problem, though, OK, and I'm going to go ahead and throw out and prove to you guys why most of us, and I'm going to put myself in that box just to make you guys feel better, um, is that most of us don't have the right timing for these. OK, how many of you guys how many of you guys punt around on a lot of options here? And let's say you get pretty aggressive and you're waiting for this move to happen, right? You're waiting for this to happen, but you just get chopped up in the middle of all this. How many, how many, how many of you guys uh, does this happen to on a regular basis? And you just kind of, you just kind of lose money. You kind of lose money. You kind of lose money. You kind of lose money. And then what ends up happening is that when that money is actually on the table, you're never actually in it, okay? And sound off here if this uh, if this happens to you very frequently. Um, so this is the this is the nature of options, okay? The nature of options and timing for some of these directional moves. It's extremely, extremely complicated. Okay, market makers love to to squeeze liquidity. They love to take out liquidity and make fake moves like this, and that gets us all very aggressive too much, too early. And then those premiums that we're sitting there buying and hoping that it's going to take us to the promised land, they end up being sold back to us, uh, you know, for a 90% discount, 80% discount. I mean, you name it. Uh, if you take a look at Netflix, you see the same thing. If you take a look at Boeing, all these names that you wanted to trade, um, you know, for a certain period of time, uh, the same thing happens over and over and over again. Because why? How many of you guys are are influenced by the desire to make, you know, 300 percent of your money, 400 percent of your money, 500 percent of your money? Fuck it. A thousand percent on your money. We all want that. We all see it happen. But oftentimes we're not a part of it. Right. Now, even the guy who put the two million bucks down here, uh, you know, for this Amazon trade, we don't know where he covered. We don't know where that person covered. 
Okay. Now, chances are folks with these large accounts, they do a lot of things to hedge as well. They're also buying stock positions. They're shorting against their positions. They're playing in other options as well. So we don't know exactly what it is. The intent is where they're covering, how much they really made on this. But it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't fucking matter. I wanted to throw out this particular example, though, just to throw out what happens usually to most of us uh, when we're sitting there trading weeklies a little bit too aggressively. OK, most of us just kind of get chopped around here. We try to buy here. We try to buy here. We try to buy here and we get shaken out every single time. And on the chart, it looks it kind of looks easier, right, to be able to hold on something like this. But it fucking ain't. It ain't. It depends on how much emotional uh, connection you have to these moves, how much of your account obviously is in these things, how many times you've taken a loss trying to find these things as well. All of that factors into you making the right decisions when you need to. OK, so how does that factor into selecting the right strike price for your strategy? How many of you guys are scalpers? Consider yourself scalpers. And how many of you guys consider yourself uh, uh, swing traders? OK, so I know a lot of you guys are sitting here trading weeklies as well. Those of you who are trading weeklies, chances are you're only holding these moves for a day, maybe a couple of days. You know, nothing crazy. Now, if you're trading for larger, longer term positions, you know, let's say you're trying to go for, uh, you know, this NVIDIA move coming back or, you know, the Apple move coming back. You know, this is now a science here that we're going to start talking about. Like, OK, how much time do you need? What price do you have to pay for? And what is the expected profit that you're going to be looking at? And then through there, through those uh, uh, practices, you can figure out which option you want to mess with now. OK, I'm going to fast forward here to something that I'm trying to do right now, and I'll kind of bring you through a scalp example, a swing example uh, and so on and so forth. And then we'll go ahead and take some questions. So I see here, you know, most a lot of you guys are saying scalp it, It's basically 50 50 here on the scalp and swing. OK, so. Folks, I missed this entire move up. I missed this entire move up because I figured, OK, spy has run a good amount. You know, maybe we'll just start to slow down right here and, you know, uh, uh, Amazon running 100 freaking points wasn't even in my head as a possibility, even though I saw all this flow kind of happen. And I was like, holy shit, you know, this 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 really could happen. OK, but I wasn't a part of it. I didn't play it. I wasn't confident on it. And my mind was in other places. Now what I'm looking to do. Uh, after looking uh, uh, at, uh, let's say, the SPY chart. So, for example, let's look at it for about six months. You have SPY in a situation where there are so many shorts that are trapped every single time they drop the market, even 10 handles, 20 handles or whatever. And there's no real selling. There's nobody really selling anything. We had this one fluke here. Where everybody was like, holy shit, holy shit, start protecting, start protecting. We came right back. Now it's almost like we want to come back to that same place we sold off from, possibly even hit all-time highs. Okay? And I'll bring in the flow and I'll bring in some of the uh, some of the order flow here that we're taking a look at as well. And if you take a look at some of the spy bets that have uh, uh, occurred over the past uh, week or so, if you look at today, all of this, too, you can see all this 286. You can see these 290s here for March, end of March. And again, this is for small money. And if you look yesterday here, look at these April's. You know, everybody's throwing out in the 290s. So you can start to see, and of course, we have been seeing for the last week and change, a lot of still aggressive activity on the call side. And it's a real possibility that we go to all time highs. I'm kind of fighting it in my soul. I got to be quite honest. But luckily, I'm not getting my ass kicked. At least I'm not getting my ass kicked and I'm not out there being super short. Now, since I moved this, since I lost this move up, OK, and basically miss this whole move up. What are my intentions? Where am I sitting here going after? I'm looking for that top. I'm looking for that top where I can lean into some serious amount of size uh, on the short side. Now, I'm probably going to have to wait a considerable amount of time. OK, so you're talking about an Amazon might be at 1850, might even be at 1900. Like, who knows if spy goes to 300 bucks? 
I might literally have to just just go along this thing and, uh, you know, the, the, for a move here to 2000. The point is here, if you don't know when something is going to happen, which most of the time we don't, that is immediately, immediately buy time on your options. OK, a lot of traders I see, they come to me, they're like, yo, you know, what, what do you think about this weekly? What do you think about this weekly? I'm like, dude, is the tape telling you we can go there right now? And the answer is always, what, what do you mean tape? I, I don't know what you're talking about. OK, and if that's your answer. All right. You always have to add more time. So if I'm looking at shorting this Amazon, for example, or even shorting a call, which, by the way, I want to short calls aggressively on this thing. And let's say I'm, I want to short calls at maybe 1850 or maybe 1950 or something like that. Immediately, I say, give myself some time. So forget about next week. Forget about the week after that. Just go straight to the monthly. Give myself a good amount of time to start feeling around, to start feeling around. How many of you guys feel around trades before you get in aggressively? OK, that's a concept that we're going to come back to a lot uh, during the master course. OK, how to feel around properly to see if you get the right price action to prove that you have the right timing on this move. When you prove you have the right timing is when you can start moving forward as far as the weeks that you play. OK, so, for example, here, let's say I'm trying to short this 1900 call on Amazon. OK, we look at it for the past month. We can see the premium has seriously juiced up. They're paying twenty dollars for this option, which is a month out. And I got about 80 points still in the money. If I go ahead and sell this at let's say 18 bucks and 19 bucks and the stock goes to 1850, let's say tomorrow or the next week, where do you think this option is going to go? OK, pretty simple question here. What do you guys think? This option is worth about 18 bucks right now. Let's say the stock goes to 1850. What do you think this option is going to be worth? OK, and again, you ballpark it here, estimate it. By the way, during the course, I'll also I'll also teach you my own formula on how to estimate uh, uh, the price to within serious accuracy. Uh, Alex here is saying 50 bucks. Hell fucking no. You need to take my course immediately because you said 50 bucks. Anybody else? Anybody else want to come up with an example? Vince is talking about 35. That's almost double from where this thing is. So Neil here is talking about 30 bucks. You all need to take the course because you have no idea how to price a fucking option. But this is great. Now you fucking know. OK, so you guys that are in the 20, 22, 20, you know, that ballpark right there. You good. Right. It depends a lot on theta. It depends on how quickly it goes and all that kind of shit. Again, when you do take the course, I can teach you a very simple way. Forget about the Greeks on how to price these options anyway. So let's ballpark it. Let's call it about twenty five bucks. We'll call it twenty five bucks. So if I short this call at, let's say today, eighteen bucks right now. All right. And I get in with size and I'm sitting there looking in the face, you know, of a move like that. You know, I know I'm going to be down a lot of money. OK, so right now, just by looking at the tape, just by looking at the environment, just by looking at what's going on, I know I'm in early on this. If you know you're going to be in early on something, but you need to feel it out and there's value in feeling it out. And again, these are all strategies that you will learn in detail uh, when we go through the master course. Um, you got to buy more time. You have to get more time. So what this does is I know like, hey, let's not get full size. Let's say I'm planning to get, let's say, 100 uh, uh, contracts. OK, I'll get one. I'll get five maybe at, at 19 or something like that. And then I'll let it go against me. I'll let it go against me. And the whole time I'm sitting here looking at the tape, I'm looking at uh, the indexes. I'm looking at everything just to see when things start slowing up a bit. OK. And Amazon can fake you out a lot. I mean, even today it showed us, uh, uh, you know, times where it may have wanted to slow down right off the open here, maybe here, uh, you know, but it kept it kept trekking higher. OK, unless you find real sellers here, this thing is going fucking higher. OK, if you look at Microsoft here, Microsoft is at one hundred twenty bucks. This thing is well through those all time highs. Everybody loves tech stocks right now. Buy it all. And they're going after Apple and all this shit too. the NVIDIA's of the world. And you name it. The NVIDIA now is into that big gap from two hundred bucks. So, again, there's could be huge upside. Google is not that far from all time highs. So me coming to short this 
I know I'm in too early. If I know I'm in too early, what the fuck are you doing playing weeklies? What are what are you doing playing weeklies when you know you're on the wrong side of the trade? Now the problem is is that most of you guys don't know when you're on the wrong side of the trade until you're too late. Why? Because you're pushed by emotions, you're pushed by maybe what somebody said on fucking Twitter, you're pushed by a lot of things that don't fucking matter. Okay? The only thing that matters in my world and what you're going to learn is the tape. Is bid and ask and supply and demand. If you look at the tape on Amazon every single day, let alone uh, some of these other tech names, they're bid. They're bid as fuck. Everybody wants every single dip. Shorts are getting squeezed out like crazy. And indexes are going to the fucking moon here at the at the current moment. Tomorrow everything could change, and you have to be able to be quick enough to evaluate. Anyway, so if I wanted to short this call, number one, I need time on this option. Okay, I need time on this option, and then once I start feeling that tape, once I start feeling that there are actual sellers looking to book profits, looking to clean up, looking to freaking take profits and say, okay, I'm done with this move. And then I start seeing the market also doing the same thing, aka maybe spy back down to 282, 281 or whatever. Then I know there's enough people that are doing the same thing, a.k.a. supply is winning versus the demand. If that is so, then I'll come in here to this options chain, move up a couple of weeks. I might even go to a weekly here. Uh, you know, and again, we're already at the end of the week, but I might even go to, uh, you know, as close as a March 29, which is next week and start writing things that are aggressively closer. Now, if you take a look at the 1900 uh, for next week on the Amazon here, you can see it's still worth a fat four freaking dollars, okay? And if you look at the chart on this one, this thing probably went from, oh, I would say 25 cents <laughs> to wherever it is right now. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, this thing was 25, <laughs> 25 cents 10 days ago, and now you're looking at four, four and a half or whatever on this. So a lot of it, too, is about is about understanding bid and ask on the option. OK, so now a lot of us look at bid and ask on the stock. But you don't look at bid and ask on the option. Now, when you start tying in bid and ask on the option, you'll start to see large sellers come into these options. You'll start to see the market makers saying, oh, shit, they'll start pulling that liquidity on the bid as well. OK, and then all of a sudden these options will crash and crash hard. Why? Because they're super out of the money. And nobody wants to pay the premium that they are now. And again, these are all things that you will learn in detail when you take the master course. OK, why is the price that I'm paying justified? OK, right now paying four dollars for an option here on Amazon that is 80 points out of the fucking money. OK, and that we still have seven days left till expiration. It's still kind of justified. Why? Because the name is ripping 20 points every fucking day, 20 points, 30 points, 40 points every day. So this price is justified. The second that it's not, a.k.a. you get a pullback or something like that. Boom. This this option price goes to fucking zero very, very quickly. OK, but the key is the key is the timing. OK, that is the key. OK, so now when it comes to selecting your option strike price expiration, I know we focus a lot about expiration here, is that if you don't understand or can't call the timing of a move. OK, and this is just an easy rule of thumb, buy more time on your option. OK, if your move is happening right now. OK, some shit is happening right now. How many of you guys were in that AMD? How many of you guys were in that AMD the other day? OK. AMD the other day or even today. Shit, today was even uh, a crazy day there as well. How many of you guys caught that AMD? AMD, if you – I mean today, look at all the flow here in AMD, right? These are even weeklies. Look at it. These are even other people sitting there playing weeklies here on AMD. It's great to see other people playing these things as well. OK. And if you look at uh, a couple of days ago here on AMD, you saw the same thing. Everybody's chiming in on the fucking weeklies, playing 25s, paying 26s and all that kind of stuff. OK. So if you take a look at AMD over the last couple of days, we see that one day this thing went all the way up to 26 bucks, had a stall out day. And now look at it. Right. Moved another two points today. These things are moving right now. You can feel it on the tape. You can feel it through demand. A lot of you guys are asking, how do you decide on direction? 
Do you understand the concept of supply and demand? Yes or no? And how it moves the markets and how bids and offers interact with each other. Yes or no? No? Take the fucking course. Yes? Sit around, play with your technicals here. Maybe you can draw a line and that should have worked out for you. Um, and again, so to go back to the AMD, these things are happening immediately. So when they're happening immediately, you have other people behind you as well, other people who have significant amount of money more than you do, then you can sit there and play some of the weeklies, okay? Another factor too when you want to play weeklies is how liquid those options are. When you're playing with an AMD, you get a situation where you have very liquid options. I mean, look at this shit, right? 20,000, 30,000, all this kind of stuff. This is volume. Look at the spread here too. You get a couple penny spread. That means that if you buy a significant amount and you need to sell immediately, you'll be able to find an easy bid. Now, if you go to an Amazon, if you go to a Priceline, if you go to a Google, the spread's gonna be 30 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents, okay? These are places where newbie traders, AKA you guys, are gonna get caught in some serious problems if that bid disappears. If that bid disappears, you freeze and you don't sell when you need to. Okay, and again, these are rookie issues, which you have to grow into. You have to have the experience to know what to do. Okay, but again, that's how you're picking your expiration. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about strike price as well. I hear plenty of the questions coming. We'll try to get to those uh, uh, towards the end of the uh, of the webinar. Okay, now for the selection of the strike price. Okay, and uh, and again, this this really depends on your analysis of uh, it really depends on your your strategy per se. So if you've got a swing strategy, okay, and you plan and intend on holding these things for a certain period of time, you can go out further in the money, okay? And again, these are very uh, uh, sort of loose rules of thumb that once you understand tape, once you understand the dynamics of why an option is priced the way it is, that's the plus the sweet spot that's the place where you truly understand like okay it's worth it for me to pay x y and z price because i think i can get x y and z out of it if i get my move okay so let me give you some examples right so let's say this amd let's say you want to keep rolling uh into this amd number one like you want to be booking profits and then rolling to further uh, uh months because you don't want to pay all this super high premium how many of you guys get caught paying super high premium because everybody wants in, right? Emotions are like, oh my God, I got to get in, I got to get in. One pullback day kills your whole option and you're like, ah, oh, fuck, what happened, okay? There are dynamics that happen in the market, okay? This is all supply and demand. Supply and demand is pushed by behavior, by emotions. If everybody is out there buying shit, you want to be the one selling to these people because you bought when nobody wanted these options, okay? And again, that's a difficult place to be, uh, and you'll get there over time, okay? So let's say you want to roll and take a shot on these, uh, these 30s here for AMD, okay? We know they're going for pennies right now because you still got two points to go, right? And you still all the way out to – actually, this is March, so let's kill the March. Let's go to April. Okay, so this is the April monthly. Let's go to the 30. What are these worth? They should be worth, yeah. So these things are almost a dollar. And you can see how much uh, uh, volume is in these things as well, okay? So these, you got $2 left to go. They're already paying, you're already paying a dollar for this anyway, okay? Which is pretty juiced up freaking premium. However, if this move continues to happen, you, you know, and you want to go ahead and take some advantage of it. OK, so you can it's free for you to kind of go out a little bit farther out uh, as far as an expiration if you have more time. OK, therefore, you're not going to lose that, at that much premium here every single day on time as you would in a weekly. OK, so now let's see how many of you guys are paying attention. Again, this is a simple question. This is April monthly. This thing is going for 90 cents. Right. How come the weekly? is going for four cents. Anybody want to take a wild guess? I mean, we got a lot of newbies in here. How come your weekly option for the 30 strike is going for four cents while the monthly option, okay, for April is going for a fat fucking dollar? Okay, how come? All right. Uh, Mike is saying they don't think it's going to get there. Right, you got theta, you got decay, time. This is all time, okay? This is all of this is time. 
all right? And the central principle, so to speak, of the course and what you're going to really uh, uh, understand and sort of embody is that this the value of these options, most of these options, is nothing. It's nothing. It's all just perception. And once you start to look at the market from perception, okay, through these options, then you'll start to realize, like, how much do you want to pay for these options? What do you think is worth it? OK, because if everybody else wants these options and again, the market is showing that there's a super high demand for these options, of course, they're going to be fucking gassed up in premium. Of course, a nineteen hundred call on freaking Amazon for next week is going to be worth four bucks or five bucks. Why? Because look what this damn thing has done. It's, it's ripped 100 points in five fucking days. Of course, it's going to be worth that much. It, I'm surprised it's not worth 10 bucks. OK. But at some point, at some point, right, the tape is going to say, holy shit, it's time to book some profit, okay? And that premium is going to go to fucking zero extremely quickly, okay? Now, who's to say it doesn't go to nine before it does? Who's to say it doesn't go to 15 before it does? My point to you is that this is all – it's all bullshit. It's all perception, okay? The price of these options is pure perception. And if you understand how to read perception, that's going to give you the edge on selecting the right strike price at the right time for the right strategy. OK, if you're if you're a scalper, you always want to play weeklies. Why do I say that? Because you're going to be able to get in and out immediately. Now, if you're a scalper who's a shitty scalper, what are you going to do if you're a scalper who's a shitty scalper? You're going to buy an option and you're going to hold it because you want to go to the promised land like everybody else and you're not a true scalper. OK, so what's going to happen to that option with you in it? That option is going to go up a little. You're going to be like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. And then it's going to go down to fucking zero. OK, that's what's going to end up happening to you. So if you're a scalper who doesn't scalp well, <laughs> Buy some fucking time on your options, okay? You shouldn't be messing around with weeklies. Let me give you guys the real deal. I sell these options. Why do you think I sell most of these options, okay, to people like you guys, all right? And again, I'm, 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 I'm definitely uh, typecasting a lot of you people in here. But why do you think I sell to you guys? Andy is here saying, uh, hey, I'm a shitty scalper. A lot of you other guys are saying, hey, I'm a shitty scalper. OK, why do you think I sell these options? I'm out here selling these options to you guys because you guys are shitty scalpers. Come on. You said it yourself. All right. Now, if there's no direction, which most of the time there isn't, if you take a look at Amazon for the last three months, there hasn't been any direction whatsoever. OK, obviously, <laughs> you know, we had a huge change in character, which I totally fucking missed. But during this whole time, what do you think I was doing? Everybody who wanted to buy or go long Amazon, I was like, yeah, go go ahead, take that. Everybody who was short uh, Amazon, go ahead, take that, take it, take it all. You want you want puts, you want Amazon, you want you want calls. What do you want? I got it for you. What do you want? All right. So that's my that's that's my world. Now, if I'm trading at my best and if I'm honest, I'm also able to catch the directional. But I got some other shit going on here in Puerto Rico. My mind hasn't been in the right place, so I missed this fucking move. And this is where my real bread and butter is, catching moves like this. you know. And this is where you're really going to get paid, paying, uh, you know, going long premium and, and you know, really leaning into some long options, whether they're monthlies or not. Guys, in reality, when you get a real move, it doesn't matter what fucking option you're in. It doesn't matter. Yes, of course, on the weeklies, you'll make some more money. Yes, of course. However, every single one of these monthlies on Amazon has tripled, quadrupled, fucking went 10 times. You would have been fine in any option, okay? The key is the timing, all right? True scalpers, you can stick to weeklies. Why? Because true scalpers, they sell immediately once shit, once the writing is on the wall. Those are true scalpers. Anybody who's not a true scalper, aka a wannabe, I'm out there collecting most of your fucking premium. So if you are losing money out there, chances are it's coming to my pocket or it's coming to the big boys out here who are selling all these options to you shithead scalp wannabes, okay? <laughs> And, and you that, don't want to be these people. You don't want to be these people. Charlie, what do you, what do you, what do you got? I was going to say, and that's probably a good point to, to, to pause on.
because that's, <laughs> that's, that's one of the things that Lucci teaches you in the master course, seamless transition here, um, is how to sell options um, and how to be on the other side of sure. that of that equation so that you're not sitting there, uh, you know, lighting your money on fire on a, on a weekly basis sure. and wondering what the fuck is going on. So sometimes um, I get a little, yeah, sometimes I get a little carried away. So part right, of the right. course, yeah. yeah, part of the course is like, we want to teach you this stuff. We, we want you to understand what the other side of the trade is. Most of us are so one track minded. We're like, okay, Amazon's going here or AMD's going here. But we don't sit there and think about who the fuck is taking my other, who the fuck is taking the other side of my trade. You know what I mean? How many of you guys actually think about that? How many of you guys actually think about what a market maker has to do when these moves actually happen? Because the market maker is getting his ass kicked right now and they have to hedge, they have to go ahead into protection mode because at some point they're coming for that money back, okay? And if you don't understand this shit, selecting the right option and selecting the right expiration, none of this shit is gonna kick in. None of this shit is gonna kick in at all and this is what the whole course is about, okay? Yeah. So I'm trying to give a little bit without giving too much here, Charlie. Charlie, Charlie is the, Charlie's I'm, I'm my like, boy, this is what he does, you know? He's I'm like, like yeah. man. If everybody else in here is like, yo, Charlie, shut the fuck up, let him keep going. And I'm like, ah, eh, let's, let's, let's uh, pump the brakes here. Um, no, I mean that's one of that's one of the biggest things that Luigi does. That he's that the reason that he is so successful teaching this course, and the reason that we have so many guys and and women who've been with us for this long, um, who've stuck with us, because he removes blind spots for you guys. You know, so many people, even people who are trading decently successfully right now, they have huge blind spots in terms of understanding what is actually happening to create these moves. What what the the incentives or the the mentality is of the other market participants? They're trading blind in a lot of ways. And Lucci, one of the things that Lucci is so good at is just giving that like comprehensive understanding of exactly what's happening, um, what's creating these moves, why people are acting in, in the way that they are. Um, and that's that's one of the, the, the pieces of edge that he gives you in, in the master course. So we can start taking some questions here um, from everybody. There's a shitload of them. So we'll start getting into it. Um, again, master course starts on Monday. Still have three discounted spots left. So sign up. Uh, now, uh, 750 bucks off www.sangluchi.com forward slash mc750 or email me charlie at sangluchi.com and we will get you all set up. Um, <clears throat> there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of questions here. I don't know, take your pick and then shoot them at me here. Yeah, there's a couple good ones. Steven had a good one that I saw earlier. Um, a little bit. A little bit in depth. We'll, we'll 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 try and stay on topic. But um, yeah, guys, if we missed your question too, just repost them. Repost them. Yeah. Um, I would like to know if you could explain how to get better fills compared to dark pools. Would I need to go direct access to, to a direct access broker like TradeStation? And you know, this is the kind of stuff that we get more into. Like yeah, um, you know, yeah, dark pools, yeah, stuff totally. like that. I mean, I don't trade through Fidelity. I, I don't trade through Fidelity. My orders go through Sterling. So I have another screen here with my execution, and then I go through Sterling here. OK, so again, like I use Fidelity for data. I use Fidelity for data because I, I just like how clean it is and how simple it is. And again, we'll, we'll talk. We have a whole section in the course, obviously, about platforms, too. A lot of you guys who don't trade that much, a.k.a., you know, let's say 10 contracts a month or even if it's 100 contracts a month, like, you know, you're not it's not justified enough for you to go straight to direct market access. But once you really start trading like, you know, 100 contracts a fucking day type shit, you know, all that kind of stuff like then you you you, you definitely should start thinking about direct market access. Why? Because, number one, your fees are going to go down considerably. And then number two, you can control where your fills are. And we we discussed the make or take a rule and it's a it, it's impact on the market and it's impact on your order execution as well. If you guys don't know what make or take a rule is, I mean, again, like it's it's you're, you exist in that world where do you need to know or do you not need to know? You know what I'm saying? Because, Charlie, it, like if these guys are trading 10 contracts, they don't fucking need to know. They don't they don't right. need to know what it is. They don't they don't they don't need to know. Yeah, there is, and that's part of what is important to to in you know as you develop is just to understand like when you need to worry about certain problems. And exactly. Have, for most people, the commissions, you know, hiding your 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 orders, very you know special order type stuff like that, you don't even need to worry about that. If Lucci's doing that, that's that you, you. I highly doubt that most people are are trading the size that um 
you know, that, that require that sort of concern. But if you are, you will learn how to do that. That's, you know, Lucia will teach you how to do that. Um, Indeed. Indeed. Okay, David McLean's asking, do you go over non-directional strategies? That's a good question. 100% bro. <laughs> like, like, dude, I'm 80% non-directional. Like now in my trading, I'm 80% non-directional. When I was in New York with Charlie running that fund, I was like 90% directional. I was like 90, 95% directional. Um, so absolutely. I will show you guys my writing strategy, what I've done, like, like, uh, you know, a lot of non-directional strategies as well. I mean, non-direction, is where it's at, is where the consistency is at. If you're looking for consistency, non-directional is where it's at. If you're looking for some serious gains and to make some serious moves on your account, but also take a significant more risk, then that's you know that's where you go to the uh, directionals. As far as you guys are asking for long-term options, again, tape, bid and ask, supply and demand, and understanding how to look at a market from that perspective, it doesn't matter what fucking option you want to buy, whether you're a scalper, whether you're a day trader, swing trader, or you want to buy shit out for a year. Like this shit is where it's it's how you need to look at the market, how you need to look where uh, uh, all the market participants are at, what kind of environment we're in, how do you make your decisions. So it doesn't matter what type of strategy you need uh, or you're planning on using it for, this information will help you out. Right. Um, we got one from Syed. Um, when selling options, there's assignment risk and possibility for large losses. What was your single biggest loss trade or day? Fuck. <laughs> what, what was it, Charlie? I mean, there, I think I think there might have been a day. It's I easily over half a million. It's, it's yeah, easily up there. Like 500. Yeah, 500. It's, it's, That's, it's your up swings, there. Your swings were bigger than your losses were way bigger than you were trading, you know, like multi-million in terms of account size and everything. Right. Um, but guys, and that's one thing, like people like to talk about how big are your gains, how big are your losses, and like that's fun and that's sexy and Lucci does put up huge numbers, you know, a lot of the time and that that's great. Um, but that, you're not coming in to take the course to then start trying to mimic Lucci's numbers and size. That's not the point. Um, there are very few people who take the course who have the same temperament and the same risk appetite and the same, you know, account size to do what Lucci does. Um, almost all the people that come to the course, take this stuff, learn it, and do well. A lot of them are trading just like a couple contracts at a time, and that doesn't mean yeah. they're not cooking out six-figure months like that. Yeah, yeah. That is Some of these guys are having, to, you know, they'll start with 20k accounts. They'll start with, you know, they'll they'll make a hundred thousand, and then they'll force themselves to go back to trading a ten thousand dollar account, a five thousand dollar account, a twenty thousand dollar account. The principles that you learn. I'm using all this shit. I'm using all of this shit, even though I, you know, I have access to a little bit more cash and my swings may be a little bit bigger. Guys, if you want, you know, if you want to get your rocks off or whatever, like go to my Instagram and you can see fucking, you know, big gains and big losses. But for me, I've, I'm over that shit. Even if I post a million bucks, I ain't gonna feel like I used to feel, you know, when that happened. Why? Because it's not about that. It's, you know, I'm in a different place in life. So again, if you guys want to crawl down the rabbit hole that way, go to the YouTube channel. We got, we got plenty of conversations on that. Correct. Right. David McLean says, "Will you bring back SLTV?" We uh, we're, we're, we're toying with this a little bit. I mean, we're having fun over the last couple of weeks. We're doing, we're doing these more often. Um, SLTV. Yeah was what did we do that twice a week for a while that was that was a lot um yeah yeah but uh you know we might do it we're we're you know we're having a good time and we're working on some stuff in the background that we haven't really talked about yet publicly that we'll uh you know we'll unveil here soon enough right um, right but um, uh, i think brian here is gonna have a fucking heart attack if we don't address this stupid ass spy question thing he's got so hold uh, on let me pull that up while you get another question let me let me let me figure out brian okay cool um, all right, yeah, so we'll do these two will be the last questions, guys. And then if you have anything else, uh, email us, contact at singlucci.com, and we'll, uh, we'll get your questions answered. Uh, to sell calls and puts on Amazon, what kind of account size do you have to have or need? Will it work on a 50K account? Do you have to have yeah, like totally. 100? 50K, 50K is fine. Actually, 50K is more than enough. And again, like, Gerardi, you, you also have to realize, though, and that you don't really realize it quite yet, is that you're sacrificing – other opportunities for the ability to be able to sell options okay so you can sell let's say a spread or two or you know 10 contracts or something like that 
but you're going to be that that's it you're going to be maxed out okay you're going to be maxed out as far as risk as far as buying power so that means that there's a big opportunity cost to to doing that however there's a huge opportunity cost any in in life number one and especially in trading anything you decide to do with a smaller account uh you know you can't do something else you got to say no to something else so girardi yes absolutely 50 grand is enough i started with the same amount bro uh last year i started with the same fucking amount i had a fifty thousand a hundred thousand dollar account you know and i i did the same thing slowly 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 you know just collecting income collecting income and then when a big move came you know i tried to make sure i was on the right directional side of it as well as writing against it too so again girardi absolutely you can do it um but there are other things that you need to account for that you may not know about and uh and that informa information is huge brian here is talking about the 261 spy bet here Okay, so Fidelity has it marked as uh, as a it looks like a, it looks like this was all done on the bid too, and I'm thinking maybe it was a calendar because if you look at the May third, uh, you know they were also on the other side of this. So you know I don't know this could be part of a you know this could be part of a of a more advanced strategy. So Brian, I'm not too, I'm not, I'm not sure to be quite honest. Let's see what, uh, let's see if uh, uh, Jesus picked it up and uh, and see what he threw out there. I somehow I doubt he even threw this out here because this could be part of something bigger. Uh, so maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Yeah, it doesn't look like it either. Okay, so I don't know, I don't know. 263, yeah, for the same date, you know. So so this could be part of another side. Uh, you know, you could see spreads. There might be a, this might be a calendar spread. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Hedge. Yeah. Could be a hedge. I don't know. Maybe somebody's, uh, yeah, maybe somebody's adding to a short position. They got fucking smoked on. <laughs> like, I don't know. You could see there's already open interest of 125,000. You know what I'm saying? So if there's already open interest of 125,000, Brian, what you want to do is you want to see if this adds to open interest or this de decreases. If it decreases, that means all of this, all of these contracts here just closed out. That means somebody just got shit housed on this, on this thing, and just closed it out. I don't know, um, you know. So I would check tomorrow and then see if they added to it. If they added to it, chances are this guy bought, this guy averaged down, and he's trying to save his ass right now because he's probably getting smoked. I mean, again, and that's just my assumption. And again, guys, with options flow. With options flow, one thing about options flow is that it's not an exact science. Jesus, okay, the absolute machine he is, has been doing this for a long, long period of time. Now, in the room, we can go ahead and pump literally a hundred times more information than we do right now. Because remember, there's trillions of dollars being traded in the options market every fucking day. This order alone. God knows how much money it is, okay? If we sat there and pumped through every option and try to make sense of everything, it'd be too much. It'd be too, it'd be way too much. We flag aggressive order flow, okay? And again, we even teach a class on, uh, you know, how to read the order flow as well and why we look at it the way we do, okay? So there's a whole science to that as well. Right. All right, guys, I think that that basically wraps it up. Although one last really good question from Vince, do you really drive a Toyota Camry? That's a pretty good one to end on. Yeah, bro. I drive a fucking 2010 Toyota Camry. That shit got baseball bat prints all over it. <laughs> like, <laughs> bro, I don't care. Like, I don't give a shit about cars, man. Like, right. get, me, get me a nice, decent apartment in India, one in Puerto Rico, one in Boston. Like that's I'll I'll you know that way my daughter can go there like you know I I think differently cars that's the last fucking thing on my that mind. last apartment in India is probably gonna be the cheapest one I think probably maybe maybe maybe, maybe. I don't know maybe I don't know maybe I don't know um, all right guys thank you for for joining us um, we've we've hit on the Sangluchi Master Course enough at this point if you guys are interested you know what to do sign up or shoot me an email charlottesangluchi.com shitload to learn this is just the the tip of the iceberg here um if you have further questions on anything uh that we covered in the webinar you can also shoot me an email and we'll, we'll get them answered thanks as always for joining us hope you guys crush it tomorrow trading friday we'll see you then <laughs>